Howdy YouTube family, it's Bolt SRNA coming to you again with another day's topic. So today I actually have a special uh, treat for you. Uh, one of the local CRNAs in our community who works in a CRNA only practice, he is completing his doctoral project and he wanted to teach us graduating SRNAs about point of care ultrasound. Now this is called POCUS for shorthand, P-O-C-U-S, which stands for point of care ultrasound. This is cutting edge medicine, this is cutting edge stuff in healthcare that some of the newest people are doing and he wanted us to know what it was like and ha kind of have an introductory to what it's gonna be in the future for us and some information about it. So, let's get into it. <laughs> We started our day off with the lecture portion just so that we could become familiarized with some of the concepts and ideas of what he was going to try and teach us today with the ultrasounds. Some of, of course, like the indications why we would need to do some of these ultrasound uh, techniques and, and different ways that we can use it to help our patients and, and fine tune our anesthetics. Um, of course, the FATE exam, um, a big portion of that is the transthoracic echocardiogram, getting views of the heart, the different chambers of the heart, seeing how the valves function, uh, being able to get a rough estimate to the, uh, for the ejection fraction for the patient to let you know, if, you know how well their left ventricle is functioning and even maybe see some hypokinesis or any kind of wall, wall abnormalities. Um, he continued on to talk more about uh, pneumothoraxes and the ways you can use ultrasound to assess for a pneumothorax in a patient, especially a trauma. Um, another way that you can use this ultrasound is to check for NPO status. So if the patient's NPO, you can check the stomach contents and see if there's fluid or there's uh, food in there. Um, then of course the FAST exam. This is good to look for, I believe it's um, blood pooling in different areas of the abdomen. Then we went into the laboratory where he had uh, some volunteers that he brought with him who offered to be NPO all day or all morning at this point and let us scan them so that the various different aspects, we could scan the stomach, we scanned the inferior vena cava to look for volume status, uh, we scanned their heart and looked at chamber views, we scanned the lungs to see kind of how the pleural uh, tissue moves and things like that. Um, so they really allowed us to scan all over them and, and we all just took the probe at different points and, and scanned. And then they actually ate at a, midway through the scanning process so that then we could scan them afterwards and see how the stomach handles food or what it looks like freshly after you've eaten. And then we scanned them later so that we could see what it looks like a couple, you know, an hour or so later after they've eaten. See fluid accumulation. And once you see fluid in there, you have at least 150 cc's in that. Bladder there. You can see it. And you would see fluid around the bladder itself. You just kind of see it pushed out of the way. This bladder. You see it underneath there? Yeah. You, you would see, see fluid around. There. You're going to find that liver and it scans slightly up. I'm actually going to increase the depth a little bit so we can see the spine. Spine, you see it looks like a little sawtooth pattern. Scan up. We're on the left side of that, you can't see a whole lot. That's because lung and air is in the way. Take a big, deep breath in. See how it pushed everything out of the way? Mm -hmm. It looks like a curtain got closed. That's called a curtain sign. So a curtain sign it means that lung is getting in the way there and it's pushing all the abdominal contents out of the way. Seashore sign. Mm -hmm. See, waves rolling to the sea. That's because in the superficial fields, it's, it's just not, it's nothing moving, but down here in the pleural space it is. So that means that you have lung that's being aerated and ventilated because there's no air between the pleural spaces. Now rotate the probe around till you see a big vein. There. So we're looking to make sure that it pulsate, it doesn't. Now if I angle this way, you're going to see the aorta, angle where it's angle where it's pulsating. See the pulsate? It's going to be like 55. Drop our cursor up there. 2.14. So we know 1.5 to 2.5 is normal, right? So that means he's normal volumic right now. If he was over 2.5, you know, 3 centimeters, 4 centimeters, 5 centimeters, that means he's probably high, uh, volume overloaded. Now, one other thing we can do, aorta, so then angle this way to look a little bit this way. And now, see if it is. Yeah, so that's probably... That's the inferior vena cava? Maybe. So just angle a little farther, just see if you can see anything else. Now if you're not quite 
in line with the vessel. You can see part like of the vessel. Like you can say, okay, into go. the ice shroom. Yeah. Um, yeah. Say it coming in. Yeah. 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 Well, all right, what did you guys think? Was that interesting? Is that something that you thought CRNAs do? <clears throat> it's something that's newer that a lot of residencies and you know SRNA training programs are starting to incorporate now. And a lot of newer CRNAs and, and CRNAs who are pursuing the cutting edge technology out there, they're including this into their practice. They're buying little butterfly ultrasounds for a couple thousand dollars that you can plug into your iPhone or an iPad. And they're scanning patients you know, in for your vena cavas and their stomach for, you know, stomach contents and they're, they're scanning for pneumothoraxes and they're scanning, uh, you know, uh, like TTE kind of stuff, which is transthoracic echocardiogram, like you saw us doing, like getting visual uh, portions of the chambers of the heart and seeing kind of how the valves are working in a, you know, a very gross kind of fashion. Uh, you know, you can kind of get a, an idea for what's going on with the ejection fraction, things like that, which gives you better information to how, uh, of how you're going to perform your anesthetic for your patient, what kind of situations are going on with your patient, um, all that stuff. So it just makes you a better clinician, a better practitioner. It makes you more full service for the group that you're working for so that you can offer more of your services and really a better provider for your patients so that you're, they're getting the cutting edge, top of the line kind of provider who knows how to do everything that needs to be done to make sure that they have the safest, highest quality anesthetic. So I hope to continue to see great things like this in the future. For you guys out there in CRNA school now, is this going on in your practice? Are, are you guys um, being taught this in your programs? Uh, what kind of stuff are you learning in your programs that you think is going to be uh, highest quality, cutting edge stuff for the future? So I look forward to using this in my practice in the future and hope to see you guys doing it too. Well, how did you like that video, guys? Give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, share. Do all that stuff. Hit that notification bell, as YouTube constantly reminds me to tell you to do. If you have any questions about what we talked about today, of course, hit me up in the comments below. I should have some videos floating around here. You can click that one or that one. Click that subscribe button somewhere in there. And that's Bolt Out.